Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. In this video, we're going to take a look at WebSockets. Now, WebSockets are not uniquely a feature of Node.js. There are WebSocket implementations in many environments. They've grown in popularity because they kind of break the normal pattern of browser server communication. In a normal HTTP request response cycle, only the web browser can initiate communication. It sends a request to the server. The server retrieves the data that's necessary and responds back. And that works well in most scenarios, you know, where you're browsing the web, you want to look at a new web page, you want to click on something and it triggers an action on the server and you get your response back. But what if the data is changing on the server and you want to notify the user when a change has occurred. Using the traditional request response uh, cycle, what you end up having to do is create a polling scenario where the web browser is constantly asking the server, has this changed? Has this changed? Has this changed? And that's not very efficient. Uh, it requires extra load on the browser to continually make requests, extra network traffic, and extra load on the server because 99% of the time it's responding back, no, it hasn't changed. No, it hasn't changed. And maybe you're having to redo database queries over and over again just to see if something has changed. The whole idea of WebSockets is let's make this more efficient because it's, let's allow the server to initiate the communication. So when something happens on the server or when the server is notified of something by one client, it can actually initiate communication with multiple clients. This is the other area where WebSockets are more efficient is we don't have to wait for a request to come in. Maybe you've got 100 clients attached to you. You don't have to wait for them to all request something. When a, an event occurs, you can communicate out to all of them in, in uh, one go. And particularly in the world of analytics and HANA, you can imagine this sort of approach would be, be very useful in a dashboarding scenario. So many of the early reporting dashboards, every little part of the dashboard is constantly having to go back to the server and rerun queries to see if there's any changed data. If you want these nice live interactive dashboards. And you can imagine the kind of load that can put on the server. And, and most of that is wholly unnecessary. Wouldn't it be far more efficient if we could uh, have an event on the server so that when the data changes, it just communicates to all the dashboards that are connected to the server and they all get the new data at once. Okay, And this is, as I said, not a unique capability of Node.js, but Node.js is very well suited to the WebSocket kind of communication. The whole idea of the asynchronous non-blocking uh, infrastructure of Node.js makes it very well suited to be able to communicate with multiple clients at the same time using WebSockets or, or to handle multiple incoming events with WebSockets. So you see, uh, you know, even though WebSockets are available in Java, uh, even in ABAP now these days, you see a lot of the large scale internet imp uh, implementations of, Node socket, uh, of WebSockets using Node.js because it is so well suited to this kind of scenario. So what we want to do now is we want to build a little WebSocket example uh, using Node.js. And um, what we're do going to do is we're going to create a chat application because it's going to see how we can initiate communication from the client side, how it can go to the server, and then the server can push it out to all other listening clients. Um, and we'll also see how this can be a real-time sort of thing. Uh, thanks to the push nature WebSockets, um, all the connected clients will see the updates at the same time. We've already used WebSockets in some of our earlier examples. When we wanted to see the asynchronous non-blocking nature of Node.js, we couldn't wait on a request response cycle to see that. We needed to be able to push updates as soon as they happened. We're just going to use that same concept and, and now apply it in a new way. So let's go back over to our project and let's create a new route handler specific to our uh, our uh, WebSockets that we want to implement. So let's say app use node chat. And then we want to require routes chat server. 
and like our earlier WebSocket example, this is why we've got our input parameter of server on some of these so that we can pass in um, the low-level web server to attach the WebSocket directly to it. Next, we want to create this chat server handler. So, chat server server.js and we have a code snippet for this .js. no I didn't put a .js on the end of that sample there we go and let's look at the coding we are using a third-party open source module called WS for WebSocket there's a couple of different popular WebSocket implementations out there. Um, I've played with several different ones. I've used a couple of different ones in, in different scenarios. I find that this WS module, it's a little lower level than some of them, but also I find it simpler to use. Maybe it doesn't have um, as much cross-browser compatibility as some of the other modules, but it works fine for my scenario. Uh, works fine in Chrome, which is usually what I'm testing and, and working in. Uh, but, you know, take what we're learning here about WebSockets in general, and, and maybe you play around with and, and use a different WebSocket module implementation. Um, but what we see here is basically we want to create a new instance of the WebSocket module. Uh, we tell it it does not need to create a server itself. We already have an existing server that we're going to attach it to. And then what path to listen on. So our forward slash node forward slash chat server is what we want it to listen on. And then basically we take our server object that already exists and we attach an event to it that when there is a request to upgrade it. So if you have an incoming request as a WebSocket, that's going to trigger the upgrade request because you want to switch from regular HTTP and upgrade it to WebSockets. And uh, basically what we want to do here is the um the request will have the URL, and we just want to parse that to get the different parts of it out of there. So I'm using uh, another um, another uh, standard module here, the URL module, to, to do that. Uh, but then if the path name is equal to node chat server, the, the base part of that URL, then we want to go ahead and attach the WebSocket uh, module implementation, the WebSocket server, to that request and it's going to handle the upgrade and attach itself to to the server uh, our low level HTTP server and then the rest of this is pretty pretty straightforward we're going to create a real little, little reusable function here called broadcast and attach it to our uh, WebSocket server and basically what we want to do is we can get a list an array of the clients and we can respond to just certain clients or just an individual client. Basically, whenever we trigger this, uh, this function broadcast, we want to loop over all the clients. So we're going to say clients for each. And then for each one in the, in the array of clients, we're going to send it whatever data we have passed into this function. Okay, pretty straightforward. And then we have some event handlers so that WebSocket on connection when we establish and when we get a connection from the client established, we're just going to log that. And then um, whenever there's a new message that comes in from one of the clients, what we want to do is we want to take the data that's, that's passed into that message and we want to redistribute it out by passing it to the broadcast function. We're going to send it out to all the other clients. So if we've got 10 people chatting, one person types something, hit, hits enter, that comes back to the server. And then the server is going to communicate that out to all nine other clients so that they all see the message that was just typed okay simple example easy to to wrap our heads around because it's something that i'm sure we've all done we've all done a text chat of some sort here uh, so very easy to get started using so let's uh just go ahead and run that to pick up that change but now what do we want to do we want a little web user interface here that will be able to call our WebSocket, give us a place to type in a message and a place to see all the other messages. Uh, we've prepared uh, the UI for you. So we're not going to go and create all of it. We just called it exercise chat.zip. We'll 
download that. There we are. And we want to import it into our web module resources folder. So import what we just downloaded. So exercise chat. And going into resources, that looks right. Say OK. Yes, we know there's already content in there. We're good with that. And now we have exercise chat. It doesn't have, you know, it doesn't really have a whole lot of content in it. The main thing that we have here, we're just going to create a, a layout here uh, where we have an input for uh, the name of our user that we want to be identified as in the chat. Just, that's mainly just so we can see where the messages have come from, who said it. Um, and then a text area where we um, uh, can show the current chat log and uh, a place where we can input a new message. And then a button that will send the message, uh, that will send a new message. And we can see this if you want. See this in the layout editor here. UI5 WYSIWYG editor. This is what our UI is going to look like. Um, a, a place where we can display the chat user. Like I said, we can choose that from a drop-down list box. Uh, the chat log, place to input the, air, the, the message we want to send, and then a send button. Okay? And then the event handlers for this. And we'll, we'll learn more about SAP UI5 later. But the main thing I wanted to show you is that SAP UI5 has a WebSocket implementation as well. So on the client side, this is really easy to do. We basically just create a new instance of that. We tell it the URL that we want to point to. That creates a connection object. And then we can do things like when we initialize our view, we can attach to it. Uh, that's what's going to create the client attachment to the server. And then, for instance, when you uh, press the button to send a message, all we have to do is get the data out of the uh, screen. Uh, and, and then we can... Uh, uh, use the connection and the send function to send the data back to the server. Same thing here. We can have a listener um, that is uh, one is attached. When we get a message from the server, we just will receive the data in the event, and then we can put it back into the screen. So this is really very simple when you consider all the complex technology that's taking place here to do push from one client and then. Uh, federated out to to all the other listening clients it it's, ends up being a, a handful of of lines of code to to implement all of this it's pretty pretty striking uh so now let's go ahead and launch our page exercise chat exercise chat and what we want to do we don't want to just talk to ourselves so let's actually just open this twice, um, you know, and this would work even on two different machines. If I, you know, that would be pretty hard to show you in a video, but, um, you know, many different machines across the internet, doesn't matter. What we have here is student six and student five. And student six is going to come here and say, hi. And you see immediately it shows up here on both screens. We've pushed to all the clients. Same thing here. Student five can respond back and say, Hello, responds back. Pretty pretty simple, very powerful. And we can see on the server, if we look at the logs, just because we're, we're outputting everything uh, that's being chat, we can see when we receive from the client, then we can see that we send it out. Uh, so everything's coming back through the server. We're not doing any tricks on the client side where the two browser instances are talking to each other. One client talks to the server, the server distributes the command out to all the listing clients. So incredibly powerful technique. Um, as I said, our use case in, in our world is quite often dashboards, being able to push data updates to the dashboards. Um, but there's lots of other scenarios, IoT scenarios, streaming scenarios, all kinds of cool applications for this technology.